So on my YouTube channel and on my Instagram, I've been sharing a lot about pet sitting. And so I wanted to make a video because a lot of you have actually been asking me like how I got into it, like how does it work, how do you get these jobs? I've been really loving it so far. So I thought I would make a video about it. If you are also interested in making money with pet sitting and honestly just like being with these adorable pets, oh my gosh. <laughs> So I actually just started pet sitting like two months ago and so far I've done two week-long pet sits. This is the second week-long pet sit and then I have two more coming up. Each of those are three weeks long, so it's pretty long. And out of these four, only one of the pet sits is not paid and that was the first one. What is the difference between pet sitting, house sitting, boarding, and dog walking? Ow! Nothing. He licked my eye. So pet sitting can mean a lot of things, but usually when people say pet sitting, it means you live in the person's house. So pet sitting is like house sitting, but pet sitting means there's pets in the house, whereas house sitting means there are no pets and you're just house sitting. But house sitting can also mean pet sitting too. <laughs> I don't know if that's confusing. Boarding, on the other hand, is when somebody else's pets comes to your house to live. And dog walking is pretty simple. It's like when you pop into somebody's house and you walk their dogs. And then there's also like check-ins if they have cat. Like you can go check in, play with the cat, feed the cat. Okay, so obviously if it's dog pet sitting, then it's a lot more work than cat sitting because with dogs, you normally have to take them out for walks. Luckily here with this, Oh my gosh, my bra was showing the entire time. Anyways, luckily with this pet sit, with these two adorable dogs and this one cat, um, the dogs actually don't need walks. They just go out into the backyard because it's pretty big and they just poo and pee there. And then I just like collect the poo. Can anyone start a pet sitting business? So I would say yes, but there are a couple of things you wanna keep in mind. Obviously you can't be allergic to pets. It would be good if you have experience with pets, but if you don't, that's okay too. I have a lot more experience with cats. So with dogs, what I had to do was just go play with my friend's dogs. So I would say dogs are a little bit easier to understand than cats but I think both are pretty easy once you get the hang of things. Cat is on the bed with me. This is the first time. And the best way to get experience is if you do have friends with pets, like just go over to their house and like play with the pets. Ask them about the feeding schedule, the walking schedule. You can try scooping litter. I think anyone can do the actual giving food part, scooping litter, walking the dog part, it's not that hard. The one thing I am careful of is if I do get a request from somebody and it's like a very, very big dog and I have to walk the dog, I don't wanna be pulled by the dog. So I always ask like, if it's a big dog, like will it chase after squirrels? Like, am I gonna be pulled? Will I be able to control the dog? That's why I prefer like small and medium sized dogs actually. So for me, it works out perfectly because I work from home. I run my own business, like this content creation business, my YouTube channel. So I don't have to like report into an office. Um, but I do think that with COVID, a lot more people are working from home. So I think a lot more people can actually start a pet sitting business because you're working from home and you don't have to go to an office. So you can live wherever you want as long as you have good internet. Oh, and then that's something else I double check with the places I go is like, make sure the internet is good. And then obviously like if you have your own pets at home or if you have kids and like responsibilities, then it makes it a lot more difficult to pet sit. So I think most pet sitters are either single, like you don't have that many responsibilities or maybe you're retired. How do you get started with pet sitting? The most important strategy and the thing that I think has worked the best for me is actually telling all your friends about it, telling everybody you know, using your own network to get these pet sitting jobs. The thing is, if somebody's living at your house, like you would probably prefer somebody you know, right? And not a stranger. That's why it's been pretty easy to get pet sit jobs because a lot of people I know have pets and a lot of people I know know other people who have pets and because they trust me, then they're more likely to invite me into their house. Another thing about going through your network of friends is that 
when you book a pet sit, they are less likely to cancel. I've booked some pet sits on websites where I don't know the person, the other person doesn't know me. And a lot of the times they cancel because they say, oh, I found a friend who can do it instead. So for me, the best strategy is definitely like going through my friends and telling everybody I know when I'm doing a pet sit, like I'll post it on my Instagram and people can see that I'm pet sitting. And that's actually how I'm getting a lot more inquiries. Second way to get pet sitting jobs is to use sites like rover.com. So I personally am on Rover. There's like a $25 fee and I get requests pretty regularly. Like I think the website is pretty good. Like you put in your calendar and everything, you put in your rates and people just like send me messages even though I don't have any reviews. I just made like a profile writing about some things about me, sharing my social media, my YouTube channel. And yeah, it's been pretty good so far. By the way, this is not sponsored. I wish it was sponsored, but it's not. The one downside I found is that you can only do pet sits that are 100 kilometers from your house. So let's say if I wanted to travel to Toronto and do a pet sit, I can't do that. I live in Vancouver, so I would have to put a Toronto address instead, but then there's the likelihood of someone canceling. So. I wouldn't use Rover to like travel and pet sit. I would definitely go through my network of friends. So some other sites you can use are trustedhousesitters.com, which I believe there's the fee is pretty large. I think it's more than $100 for the annual fee and you don't get paid. So this one is more like a travel exchange kind of thing where you get to go to a new place and there's I think this site ha is like in so many different places in the world, like definitely North America and Europe, like a lot of people use trusted house sitters. So basically you go to the place, it's like you get free accommodation in exchange for you taking care of people's pets and they don't pay you anything. Same thing uh, for housesitterscanada.com, which I have used, I paid around $50 for the annual fee and that's how I got my first pet sit. Um, so it wasn't paid, but it was somewhere I really wanted to go to. So I did it and it was free and it was awesome because yeah, I, I'm like traveling and I'm not paying to stay in a hotel or Airbnb. There are some other sites that I've seen as well, um, but I haven't really looked into them, but there are a ton of these. You can Google them and you'll find some that are maybe specific to your area. One other thing you can do is to join pet sitting Facebook groups of the areas that you want to pet sit in. So I did join a couple of these in like BC and Canada, but I found that there are a lot of people who are looking to go to other people's houses to pet sit, but there aren't a lot of people posting actual pet sitting jobs. So I really, I haven't had any luck with those sites, but you can try maybe depending on your area, like maybe there's gonna be more people looking for pet sitters instead of the other way around, which what it is like in Canada. And another way that you can get pet sitting jobs is once you are doing a pet sit and let's say the neighbors know that person's dog and they see a stranger walking the dog, then obviously like they know that person hired like a pet sitter, right? Or maybe like you're that person's friend. So when I was doing one of my pet sits, one person actually did come up to me and say, hey, excuse me, like, are you a pet sitting service? Cause we're going to Europe for two weeks in October and we need a pet sitter. And I was like, yeah, I'm a pet sitting service. <laughs> like I never called myself that, but like, yeah, it was pretty cool. Unfortunately, I couldn't do it because I have some other things, uh, but I did refer this pet sit to one of my friends who also pet sits. What should you charge for pet sitting? So honestly, there is a huge range on rover.com. I started at $40 per night and that is the suggested rover rate for one dog overnight pet sitting. But since then I've increased my rate to $50 a night. That's because I get, I've been getting a lot of requests. So I thought, why not just increase the rates? And I looked at, at like other pet sitters in my area and a lot of them were charging more than $40. So I also decided to increase mine. And after I increased it, I still got requests even though I had no reviews. So if there's more than one dog or if there's like a dog and a cat or if it's like two dogs or two dogs and a cat, then obviously you can charge more for additional pets. Also keep in mind that with a lot of the pet sitting sites like rover.com, they'll take a service fee. So for Rover, it's actually 20%, which is a lot. And that's also another reason why I increased my rates. 
and if it is a longer period of time you can give a discount because you're staying more days and it's like it's less work for you because you already know the pets you don't have to move around so if it's like a long period of time like five days or more than 10 days then you can give a little discount for me, if it's somewhere that I really, really want to travel to, then I will usually charge less just to get the job. Um, or if it's like for a friend, or if you're able to like come up with a kind of like deal where they pay your flight or something, I am flexible with that. Like I'm not super duper flexible with my $50 a night rate. It's mainly for strangers. If you are interested in dog walking, I would say a good starting rate for a 30 minute walk is $25. Keep in mind, you're still spending time going to the place and coming back from the place. So it's more than actually 30 minutes. I would say if you're just one person and you wanna make a full-time salary, I don't think pet sitting is the right thing for you. For most people, it's mainly a side hustle. And for me, I love it because it's fun. I get to go to new places. Even if it's like within my own city, it's like I get to live in a new part of town that I don't usually live in. So it's still nice. For me, I would definitely keep this as a side hustle and not use it to like rely on for my full-time income. Once someone is interested in you pet sitting, what do you do? I usually like to do like a virtual meet and greet, like a Zoom call, just so I can meet the person because I'm going to be living in that person's house, right? I kind of want to meet the person. Um, and usually I'll ask them just to show me around the house a bit, show me the pets, and usually they have some questions for me. To, um, so it usually takes about maybe half an hour to do the virtual meet and greet. And then if you decide to go with it and they want you to live in their house, I usually collect a deposit that is refundable seven days before the actual pet sit. And that's because I'm holding the pet sit in my calendar. So if they cancel, it's kind of like, it's like lost opportunity cost for me. Can you hire me for a pet sit? The answer is yes, you can. You can message me on Instagram. You can message me on Instagram or you can email me. So I have a lot more tips about pet sitting. Like what do you do once you actually go to that person's house? So if you are interested, I can make another a video about like the logistics and like what to pack when you, go there and uh, like what is like a typical day like in terms of schedules and stuff like that. So leave a comment if you have more questions about pet sitting. And if you're on the fence about pet sitting, um, then make sure you watch these two videos to learn more about pet sitting.